Here we are in June in Cornwall. Wouldn't you know it? We promised you beach and sand, but we haven't got it. But we've got something much better than that. We've got St Austell Brewery, established 1851. Brewers of superb beers and probably the most important brewery in Cornwall. We've come to this far-flung part of England to enjoy these beers and they are superb. Pete Brown's going to be telling you about IPAs, his favourite style of beer, and I'll be looking at the brewery and we'll be having a few beers together. So let's go and have a look at a really good modern brewery. We've come into the brew house here at St Austell Brewery. I'm stood beside a marvellous new mash tun, very, very new, with Barry, production manager for St Austell Brewery. Hello Barry, how are we? Nice to meet you. Um, Barry, you've been here, you tell me, a lot of years. We won't say too many, but you must have seen quite a few changes. Yes, I have indeed. These mash tuns have been put in in the last uh, 15 weeks. How many barrels of beer can you brew on, one of, on this in a brew? Uh, uh, this mash tun actually is sort of at 4.3 tonne, which we can get about 170 barrels. 170 barrels? Out of it in the run, yeah. We're mashing uh, three times a day, so we're brewing three times a day, four times a week. Brilliant. Four times a week? Yep. Proper brewing? Proper brewing. Monday to Thursday? Monday to Thursday and, and Friday. And we're here on a Friday. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Clean down day. Proper brewing, lucky man. <laughs> Apart from Tribute, which I know you're justifiably very proud of, it's a great beer, what other ones do you do? Uh, you're launching a new one, I think, aren't you? Yes, we've just launched uh, a new beer in the last uh, week or so um, called Trelawney, um, which is a new brand altogether and uh, yeah, 3.9 beer that um, is doing really well out there. I know you use a variety, you've got no hops in, in Cornwall because it's the wrong climate and, and the rest of it, uh, but you have got your own barley, I believe, you, you've grown up. Cornish Gold, is that right? Yep, Cornish Gold, which um, is a sort of like 15 to 20% that goes into tribute mm. and we use whole, all Cornish gold in our um, bottle beer Admiral's Dale. Um, I am a great believer in um, relationships with farmers as is Roger who yeah. actually uh, goes around to see all the farmers and uh, it, you know and I, I think that part of it is to see what they're doing to reduce yeah. the grain for us I, I yeah. think is uh, really good. We're here in the visitor centre well, part of it, because through there is a, a fine bar and a, and a restaurant, all about the history of the, of the family here and what's happened, the timeline, all about brewing, excellent place. I'm joined by Mark, trade marketing manager. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. Yep. Hello, Mark. Yep. Nice all right. Fantastic uh, visitor centre. Um, tell me, is it a significant part of the business? It seems to be quite busy when I came in earlier. It, it's... Uh... It's a significant part of the business in that it's our shop window for the yeah. business. So Cornwall attracts lots and lots of visitors down into our part of the area. Um, and it's a great shop window for people to come and see the, the brewery, taste the beers, um, learn a bit about our pubs and our hotels, of course, as well. Yeah. So it's a really important, important part of our business from, from that respect. It isn't, wouldn't be the biggest profit earner for the company, but in terms of the showpiece, then it's, then it's a, a vital cog. Phenomenal growth over the 10 years, and you've been here 10 years, so it must be down to you. <laughs> no, I think it's actually down to, to Roger who brews some fantastic beers. All right. Um, and also the company have invested in terms of marketing of the brands. So that's really where the, the growth has come from. But it does all start with the beer and getting the beer right in the first place. He has a deservedly high reputation, Roger, for uh, as the head brewer at St Austell. Very well recognised as a major brewer of Carlson Edition beer and it's his passion. His foremost brand is Tribute. You as a marketing man must want just occasionally other things to push out there. <laughs> um, it's nice to play and, and we play with seasonal beers and that's one of, one of my passions is I'm quite closely involved with the seasonal beer programme and we invent different beers. But actually a tribute is very close to my heart as well and, and I think we've always focused very much on, on that one brand and grown that one brand because we've seen that as, as our route to success and so far it's, it's worked. Um, I think about 75% of the beer that we brew is, is tribute and it's still growing at around about 20% a year. About 10 years ago, if you'd asked the average beer drinker in Britain where, which parts of the country brewed the best beer, they'd have probably said Yorkshire, maybe Burton-on-Trent. If you ask them now, they'll probably say Cornwall. And there's uh, good reasons for that. There's 21 brewers in Cornwall now, uh, two of them which have become real national forces to contend with, one of which, Sharps, was sold to Molson Coors earlier uh, this year, the other one uh, being St Austell. 
And part, well, probably the main reason for that success, that astonishing success, is this beer, uh, St. Austell's Tribute. It was first brewed as a special one-off beer uh, to commemorate the solar eclipse in 1999. And within one month of that event, it became the brewery's leading beer. And it's not hard to, uh, to see why. It's one of the first brews. Roger Ryman was one of the first UK brewers to really kind of get a handle on American hops and those big flavours and big aromas that they have. And he uses them in this beer, but he uses them so judiciously. He uses them so well. It's 4.2%. It's, it's got a lovely, uh, really well-developed American kind of grapefruity, orangey hop flavour, but it's really held in balance. It's got a nice, firm, multi base as well. It makes it a really wonderful session beer, and, uh, and one of my favourite beers. It's in what, my local uh, up in London, and it's a beer that, uh, that's really achieved that kind of iconic status. It really is a, a standout brand on its own. This month's beer style is India Pale Ale. Now, I wrote... 400 page book on Indie Pale Ale. I've got to try and sum that up in about a minute. It's the most discussed, argued about, overdefined beer style in the world. Pretty much anything I say about it now, somebody is going to disagree with. It's, I think the key to that is that it's a style which keeps undergoing redefinition. It keeps evolving and changing. And what we've got now is a, a revival of interest in what we think of as the original India Pale Ale, the kind of classic style. What can I say about that? It's, it's pale, obviously, the clue's in the name, except when it's not pale, uh, there are some exceptions. It's a very hoppy beer. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, it's a very har aromatic beer. We've got lots of uh, different uh, complex fruity and, uh, and resiny hop aromas and then the hops are also giving us a very long dry bitterness. Normally they're quite strong, uh, over 5%, ideally around 7%. So not a beer to, be, uh, to just be necked, but a beer that's really to be enjoyed. It's dry, it's astringent, and yet very fruity at the same time. And uh, in, in the middle 19th century, it was called the Champagne of Malt. Uh, it really was seen as, uh, as the highest class of beer there was. It was popular in aristocracy, in royal circles. Uh, Edward VII was a massive fan of it. Uh, and it made beer the most fashionable drink of the Victorian age. And we're now able to drink beers like that again, uh, which is quite a wonderful thing. We're coming out to Falmouth in South West Cornwall and to Cornwall Cameras Pub of the Year 2011. And it's easy to see uh, why the front, right on the harbour front in Falmouth, has won that prestigious accolade. Uh, it's uh, in this kind of lovely, sort of tunnel like, arched ceiling building. And um, has that real nautical atmosphere, real atmosphere. It doesn't feel forced, it just all feels entirely natural. Uh, since the current operators took it over in 2005, uh, the range of beers on the bars extended. They've had to build a stillage over here with about 10 casks on it in order to keep up with the demand for real ale. There's just something about good beers and the coast that just seem to really go together. Now down here in Falmouth, the, the sort of real star brewer uh, is Skinner's. We've talked about the Giants, we've talked about uh, Sharps and St. Austell as the as kind of two highest profile Cornish brewers. Coming up behind them is Skinner's. They brew just up the road in Truro and uh, they started in 1997 and have become a real force to be reckoned with since then. I'm going to try one of their beers. This is Porth Levin, 4.8%, uh, and it's pale, and it's hoppy, and it's zingy, and, and it's golden. And it's very nice. It's, as I said, it's a mixture of those American and English hops. One of those hops is Citra, and I think I'm probably alone in the beer writing world in really disliking Citra as a hop. It's kind of a faddish thing now, um, that people get into different sorts of hops, and, and Citra is in pretty much, it seems like, at least half the beers being brewed in the UK. And I think it's too citrusy, I think it's too fruity. But used here in combination with North Down and Mount Hood hops, um, it's really held in check. It adds something without dominating the beer, and I really like that. And so the end result is a clear, pale, golden beer that would be perfect to drink um, on the beach, and I'm sure, uh, perfect to drink after you've been surfing, but there's little chance of me ever trying that. There's a lot of talk about craft beer at the moment, and it's a term that has a very shaky, in imprecise definition. Um, I don't know what the definition of craft beer is, but I know what is a craft beer and what isn't a craft beer. And one of the lovely things about a craft beer is that it, when it has a nice story around it. Our second beer today is from Tintagel Brewery. And you can tell it's definitely a craft beer. It's uh, 
a farm up high up on the hills outside Tintagel, which turned a redundant milking parlour into a brewery and now makes some uh, award-winning ales. This is Harbour Special. It's 4.8% premium ale. A very nice aroma. Uh, it's got quite a lot of malt characters rather than just sort of being purely hopped. That really is lovely. Perhaps uh, more appropriate for a cold, wet summer than some of the golden ales, because uh, it's got a very warming character, lots of warming fruit, uh, but still got that perfect balance uh, and dryness at the end. So uh, from milking parlour to uh, Ace Brewery, I think that was a pretty good transition. Our third beer is uh, from a company that used to be called the Organic Brew House. But they came up against the real problem that uh, if you want to be an organic producer in beer, it's very, very difficult to get the right quality of ingredients. If you want to make really good beer, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is hard to source them locally. So they changed the name to the Cornish Chuff Brewery. And uh, we're going to taste one of their beers called uh, Kynance Blonde, 4.2% uh, golden ale. So even by the standards of a golden ale, this is a, a very pale beer. And if I'd been handed that blind, I would say that was a, an unpasteurised, unfiltered Czech lager. It shows what, what good lagers can be like. I mean, this is not a lager, it's an ale, but I think it demonstrates that when you get to really great quality beers of either sort, the distinction between lager and ale just becomes a little bit meaningless. I mean, I'm sure this has not been lagered for as long as a lager is, but it's definitely made from similar ingredients. And it's got that same dry, puckering, astringent, um, refreshing quality. Um, there are definitely hops in there. It's definitely not a lager. You've got a bit more character and a bit more sort of roundness of flavour than that. But it really is as good at what lager does as a lager is. And it, it shows that, uh, as I say, the, the distinction between the two is false. But it's, it's really nice. And if you're a lager drinker and you're in Cornwall, try this. And I think you might find that you convert it to ale. So we haven't really got the sun, sea and beer on the beach that we thought we were going to get when we were in Norfolk and it was really sunny last month. But never mind, because we got down here, we went to the St. Austell Brewery. I've been a long time fan of theirs, and it was great to see you around there and, uh, and talk about tribute and so on. And then we get to come down here and taste some real Cornish beers uh, on the seafront. And I think what we've seen as we've gone around Britain over the last nine months or so is a real regional diversity. And that really proves that, uh, that cask beer is a genuine craft product and one that just is endlessly interesting in an age of increasingly corporate and blandized products. Next month we're finally getting to Edinburgh and checking out the Scottish real ale scene. Scotland is the fastest growing cask ale market in the UK, so we're really looking forward to that and sure to get some brilliant beers up there. Until then, cheers. <laughs>